we have to use all three stupid fittings to make this work. Well, I think that's the last time I'm gonna pinky promise something. Hey guys, it's time for another update on our power loader series. In the last episode, we resumed the project after about a six month hiatus. We were able to get the second arm mostly fabricated, we were able to test the wrist joint, and we even did a few tests with our encoder system to have digital control of the arm. On this episode, we'll be finishing the second arm, there's still some welding we had to do, completely building and welding together and assembling the gripper. We're gonna go on a shopping trip to pick up all the hydraulics and supplies we need for the project. Bogdan's gonna start designing the shoulders, which is the next major part of the power loader, and we're hopefully gonna have everything ready to be shipped out to be painted. And in the last video, I also pinky promised that we'd have a video ready for you guys by February 13th, which means we've got a lot of work ahead of us and we're probably gonna have to work some overtime to get all this stuff done. Perfect. So before we put this arm back together and build the second arm, we wanna do a better job on the paint. What we're doing is we're taking these away to get them sandblasted so we can repaint them properly. And I think we're gonna use implement paint, which is used on tractors. So it's a very hard enamel finish. That should be a lot better than this trim clad. It's a lot of steel. So last episode, James made a pinky promise. I pinky promise. I pinky promise. <gasps> so now I'm here designing the shoulders while everybody's slaving away trying to finish the second arm. As we come closer to the completion of both arms, we need to start looking at the shoulder system. And here's what I've come up with the design. Basically, we've got an H-frame out of a box tube, which holds the two arms together and makes the whole entire body rigid. Behind it, we're using two hydraulic cylinders to actually push and pan the arms in and out. There's one for the left arm and one for the right arm. The shoulders are one of the most critical parts of the power loader design, as they must be extremely rigid in order to hold the weight of both arms and whatever you're picking up, as well as be extremely precise to allow the arms to be very accurate at the very front of the gripper. To save us time on the design, I'm actually gonna reuse all the math from the wrist joint in order to calculate and figure out the linkages for having the arm pivot up and down. Last episode, you saw us finish the wrist rotator, and that completes one full arm. You also saw that we started welding together the bicep, the forearm, and the wrist. That means we still need to finish the second gripper, the wrist rotator, all the mounting joints, and buy all the hydraulics. Up here. 
can't quote me on this, but I think we have enough claims. In either case, the next video will come out on February 13th. February 13th. I promise. I pinky promise. Pinky promise. Pinky promise. Pinky promise. Pinky promise. All right, Dave, we've got something for you. He <laughs> looks. An art sculpture. Skeptical. Is it too early to start drinking? <laughs> All right, so last time we went shopping for the power loader, we actually bought everything in like four or five trips. And this time James is like, all right, we're gonna go do it all in one. So A, this is gonna rack up a huge bill, and B, I probably missed a bunch of stuff, so we'll have to go back at some point. All right, can I get a medium double-double? A -double? uh, large dark roast with an espresso shot. We're here at Prince's Auto to get some parts for the power loader. The comments being like, whoa, there's a store where you can buy like hydraulics and things? And it's pretty normal here in Canada and the US. The main customer of stores like this are farmers because farmers are the ones buying the hydraulics to fix their tractors and whatnot. And most countries have farming, so there's gotta be some hydraulic stores out there. You just gotta find them. 3020. This is the biceps. <laughs> and this is the forearm. Look how fast our bill is going up. I think we're already over a thousand dollars. All right, so in total we need about three dozen fittings, and they're all of different sizes, styles, and angles. Okay, basically we need to be able to run each arm to a central pump. So we need to make a split connection that's gonna split the pump outlet and the pump inlet. We want it to be convenient as well. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to use these quick disconnects to be able to remove the arm very easily. So if we want to change out the pump, we just disconnect the arm, plug in a new pump. These are literally, the, you pull that sheath back and they pop right on just like a pneumatic connection. 90 degree JCs, we just picked those up. Um, 90 degree MPT, MPT to 3 8 JIC. So you guys might be wondering what MPT, JIC, and ORB mean. Well, MPT stands for National Pipe Thread. It's a slightly tapered thread that basically, the more you tighten it, the tighter it gets. JICs, on the other hand, are a far superior component because a JIC fitting is a face sealing fitting. So it's actually got this, which pushes into a seal, and then there's another seal along there. And the beauty is, most JIC fittings can also uh, rotate. Then we introduce something called the orb fitting. I don't really know much about orb fittings, but it's basically a straight thread with, again, a face seal. And it seems like hydraulic cylinders and hydraulic pumps use that fitting. So the beauty is, because of our fantastic system with North America, like the US and Canada, and every other standard out there, we have to use all three stupid fittings to make this work. Orb to JIC, JIC to MPT, MPT to JIC. I don't think we have any orb to MPT though. Not yet. Not yet. Fun facts about hydraulics. <laughs> we're gonna need another organizer for all this. All right, I think we're about through most of the list. The first list. Yeah, let's start taking bets. Okay. What's the total? Six grand. That high. Better not be that high. I'm gonna say 15. I'm gonna go no. up to 2100. Are we going prices right rules? Yeah. So if you go over, we all lose. Alright, 3k then. 21. 15, 3, 000, 3, and $3,200. Four of these guys. I'll just pass them to you. I think they got sets of four, so. I think Daryl's gonna win. Alright. Now you got four of these guys. The okay, guys so the total you. is $2,838.34. I think that means Daryl wins. I do win. Nice job, Daryl. <laughs> but really, I'm the real winner because I get to pay for it. Woohoo! <laughs> you! <laughs> oh, they so this is just for one arm of the power loader. Uh, do you know the movie Aliens? Yes. Yes. Like We're building the thing? power loader. Are you? We're building yeah. one. Oh, that's oh, cool. That'd Will you bring cool. pictures when you're done? Sure. It's, it's all cool. online. Yeah. You look up the Hacksmith where you take that, That's why we have a camera. You guys are the guys that, did you guys, you guys are the guys that made the light table. Yep. yep. Oh! <laughs> There we go. Just give it a bit longer and she's going to be glowing. Holy crap. Wait here one second. I got to call Tori. 
He will have a fit. All right. Toilet Death Services, please. Toilet Death Services. So all that is for one arm. One arm. Yeah. Holy crap, eh? Yeah, this is, we're running the second. So we've already built one arm, and now okay. we're rebuilding we're the second arm. Building the second arm. We watched the video the other day, and I'm like, we gotta get these guys in the store and try and get a deal with them. There you go. I like the car that you built. That was really Cyber cool. Cybertruck. Yes, yeah. that was really cool. It's almost done. Video will be next week or the week after okay. or something. I want to right. work something with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Hi, Jim. 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 Hi, um, and hopefully by the end of this weekend, we might even have the shoulder design done. So next week, we might even have the shoulders done at this rate. needs these holes to be drilled out and sized up and retapped to half inch bolts. Do you have trouble drilling holes in large steel plates? Do you have a hard time keeping the drill straight to make sure your holes are perpendicular? Are your parts too big to fit on the drill press? What you need is a mag drill. you need a magnetic drill press. So how does it work? So basically, you've got your drill here, it's got a linear slide that goes up and down, but the real magic happens over here. See, we've got this big electromagnet unit right here, so you can basically set this on your steel plate, align your hole where you wanna drill it, then you hit the on button, and then it produces over a thousand pounds of magnetic force holding it to the steel plate, allowing you to drill a nice, clean, perpendicular hole through your steel. Wait, Ryan, use this mag drill. Please consult your physician about magnetic drill presses. The following side effects of magnetic drill presses may include sneezing, irritation, nausea, lack of sleep, death, daddy issues, creative freedom, magnification, and indigestion. Okay, so grinding. Yes. Um, we should do that in the shipping container. We should. Hopefully all you want is five seconds of good footage. Can we get this cannon over here? Now, building a real-life version of the power loader from Aliens is quite a challenge, but when you're a problem solver by nature, anything's possible. And with a resource like the internet, you really can learn how to do anything on your own. Today's video sponsor is Brilliant.org, a fantastic resource to help you learn new skills. It's a problem-solving based website and app with a super hands-on approach for learning a wide variety of STEM topics. From solar energy to special relativity, these subjects have storytelling, interactive challenges, code writing, and problems to solve to make sure you truly understand the topic. Anyone can read a textbook, but until you actually apply what you learn, you're not going to remember it, which is why Brilliant is so great at teaching technical concepts. Basic problem solving will help you in every aspect of life. Brilliant also just launched a brand new course, The Chemical Reaction. Starting from simple puzzles, you'll see how energy, charge, and probability determine the basic behavior of chemical reactions in real systems, from the cells in your body to batteries and even internal combustion engines. Try Brilliant.org today using my link below and start your journey of becoming a hacksmith, just like me, today. Well, I think that's the last time I'm gonna pinky promise something. The team had to spend a ton of overtime, but we managed to get the second arm done. 
and even the second gripper. So now we've got both arms done, they're sandblasted, and we're ready to send them out to be painted a nice caterpillar yellow. In the next episode, we're gonna start building the shoulders and then designing the torso. This thing's really coming together. And in case you guys are curious, this already represents tens of thousands of dollars of engineering R&D costs. So if you guys wanna help support this project and our channel, check out our new merch. There are links below.